Welcome back to Restless. My name is Father Joseph Gill, priest of the Diocese of Bridgeport, and you've joined myself, Lauren, Diane, and Joe, as together we seek to follow the face of Christ in today's mixed up and crazy world. And part of our craziness is the insane pace at which we live our life as Americans, as young adults. Goodness gracious, my schedule is completely booked usually from morning till night. And, uh, you know, Lauren just invited me to a party. I um, did. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I'm going to squeeze that in. I got to find some way to get down there. because You're going to squeeze it in, Father Joseph. Well, it's, no, it's a cookie exchange, no so yes, I'm going to squeeze it in. <laughs> that means I have to bring something, though. No, you're no. priest. Priests are off the hook. No, I'll, I'll cook, some, bake some, cook some cookies. Bake cook some, some bakies. <laughs> <laughs> so are you busy? Do you yes. consider yourself busy? Yes, I am. Yes, very busy. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I feel busy. Do you feel like, is this too busy or are you like a happy medium of busyness? I would say uh, I go through, it's kind of like a roller coaster of, I think I take on, I, I've had an issue of saying no to things because I am passionate about a lot of the stuff that I do, like in, especially in the Catholic young adult community. Um, it, and then I get to a point of like, wait, I just signed up for all of these things. And <laughs> that's not good because I should say no to things beforehand, but I think I can take them on. And then I kind of look at my schedule and I'm like, mm, no, this isn't possible. Especially I'm in public accounting too. So the hours are notorious. Your hours are bad. crazy. Yeah, exactly. So I'm always sort of on call for work stuff. And then, you know, I like to run and exercise and obviously see my friends. And so, yeah. That's busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am, um, I've been busier in different points in my life. I was busiest most at the end of college, I think, because I packed my schedule full of things and try to take charge of anything as possible. And in senior year? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you're supposed to like no, no. take slough off classes no, like no. basketry oh, and stuff. Basketry. No, no, no. <laughs> Where did um, you go to college, Father Joseph? Yeah. <laughs> I did human development. That's what I did. Well, human development. Yeah. <laughs> no. Very easy. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was me. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, no, I enjoy being busy. I don't like having free time because I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not the kind of person who will free t- fill free time with like, I'm going to study the Summa Theologica and like, you know, learn Latin. And, and, you know, like, so like, oh, there are people who are just, who, who just hate to waste time. And Damn, I, like I did that last yeah, night. I, 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 I could just binge watch TV and play video games on my computer for hours if, uh, to my own devices. I like to structure my life so that I'm not, I don't have huge stretches of free time. Hmm. Um, cause that's just what works best for me. It's good that you have that self-awareness. Yeah, well, it, it took some time. Well, many wasted hour doing not much. So, so, Diane, your facial features were like, yes, I actually do study the Sumer in my spare time. Yeah, no, I, well, I, I actually, yeah. So I, I've i recently, um, I love the, de- I'm such a nerd. But um, <laughs> so I do fill my free time. Like if I have downtime, I'm always like reading a book or a podcast. Recently, I've discovered the Dominicans who uh, explain sort of St. Thomas Aquinas uh, God's in a way. Podcast. Yes. Yeah, and one. Father Gregory Pine, yeah. Pines with Aquinas. He's a rock um, star. So I love doing that in my spare time. I know everyone's laughing, but like for me, that's actually super fun. Um, yeah. Hey, more power to you. Yeah. Also growing in knowledge. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I it's, mean, it's using your time wisely. Faith. Yeah. If you think about it, like they're like, we have a limited amount of time on this earth, you know, and you want to know, you want to know God more so as to love him more. And so studying all of these things, you come to know him better and hopefully love him better. Um, yeah. I always feel so fulfilled when I'm doing things like that in my spare time. I, and I consider that relaxation. So. Mm, mm. You know, I have found that I need to have a certain amount of busyness to motivate myself to do anything because mm. if I have a lot of time to do something, it's never going to happen. I, I need a looming deadline to focus my mind. I used to really freak out. There was a Marist priest where I went to school at Marist College and we used to have these uh, Monday night meeting things for this club that was part of it. I'd show up and be asking us how we're doing. And I said, oh, yeah, you have a paper due later tonight. Did you start yet? They always like, well, no, but it's just it's just under control. And he was like, Joe, please leave and go do your paper. I'm like, no, 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 it's fine, Father. We'll do it later. But like, I, 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 I find that if I have an hour in a day, I'll squeeze in some 
something worthwhile like that. Yeah. If I have six hours in a day, I'll probably squeeze in nothing because I'll go, I have so much time. I can watch TV for half an hour and that turns into an hour, which turns into the day. So yeah. That's you interesting. Know. That yeah. is so different. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I could I could write 10 pages in two hours, but it would take me like six months if I had all the time in the world to do it, to write like a page. Like I, I need deadlines and I need to be like stressed about it to get it done. Interesting. When I was a senior in, in college, I had, of course, a big thesis paper, right? 25 pages. And so I took it first semester, had it done by the end of September. Wow. Because I'm just, I'm, I am not a procrastinator at all. I'm like, get it done. Now I get the rest of my year. I'm kind of like off. you, Father Joseph. I definitely, if I have all these things, I'm like, I need to, like, in order to not stress out, you know, get them done, like, as soon as possible. Just check off my list. Yeah. yeah I would trust you. I, I, I would have stressed you guys out so much if you were. Oh my, gosh. oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Twice I started a paper that was due at eight o'clock in the morning, midnight, but before it was, uh, I just wrote it through, through the night. Uh, well, I'm well, sure, through, I'm sure, like it was in your head, right? Percolating. No, no, not, not, not <laughs> always. No, not always. <laughs> All right, not uh, always. I always do well on them, but like I said, deadlines help focus my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would bet there are more Joes in the world than Father Josephs. As yes, as getting things done. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Which one are you? Uh... Hmm. I'm not good at getting things done early either. No, I, I need the deadlines, um, but I'm not a save it to midnight person either. I think I will start it sooner than yeah. that. But Lauren, you're super organized and you're fantastic at planning events, like planning Thank things you. out. So Yes, I also like thinking. So I can be like, all right, I'll do this then and then I'll do this then and then I'll do this then. That's good. So, That's good. No, I, I, I'm like you, Diane, except I, I'm not into the intellectual life. No? I'm not. Really? I'm not. I, I, I think I very much scandalized a couple of kids at the high school where I teach here at Cardinal Kung because uh, they were talking to me during lunch and they're like, well, what do you think about, you know, Immanuel Kant's philosophy on this? I'm like, um, I didn't read that. Like, well, didn't you have to read it for seminary? Yes, <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't read it. <laughs> Did you say you can't answer I, their question? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I read maybe a tenth of what I was assigned. That's interesting. In college I would not and have seminary. That. And yeah, I'm not a not an intellectual. But that's okay. I think everyone has their like that for me is a source of joy. I love learning. I love reading. I love listening to these podcasts and everything. But everyone's different. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like a multitasker, so I'm not going to sit and listen to a podcast, but if I am driving in my car now, that's like all I do yeah. and pray the rosary and listen to the daily gospel or going for a walk with my dog or a run. It's all podcasts now and mm. growing in knowledge. And then also a lot of my day at work. Well, I do listen to Veritas Catholic Network. <laughs> Shout out. Programs that I enjoy <laughs> um, because it's like certain things that I'm doing don't require so much focus. So I need my brain stimulated mm. and I want to learn. So. Yeah, I'm not like that at all. <laughs> well, I've, Men men are not multitaskers. In oh, general. I've also heard though recently that it's actually very good to just put all your attention into one task and do it as well as you can. And so I'm like, mm, okay, maybe I should sit along, you know, periods of time where I'm like, all right, I'm just going to focus on this one thing. I don't typically want to do that. I mean, my I always, even if I am doing work, there's at least music in the background. Which yeah, I, I guess that music. still counts. It's yeah. like you're focusing on one thing. But yeah, I genuinely... Gen genuinely or generally uh, avoid like only this for this set of time yeah i'm, I'm more like you I, I mean like i do the podcast thing when i'm working or um running or you know do any of those things and um i even find in terms of reading like i think that's why i have a hard time sort of reading complex stuff because i when I'm focusing on one thing i get sort of distracted very easily and i'll read a whole paragraph or listen to a whole thing and realize i didn't retain a word of it mm. and so like I always found even in college, I would do a lot better if I was multitasking even during class. So I was the person with notes on the left side of my screen and homework for something else on the right side of my screen or like news articles on the right side of my screen. And people were like, I know that that sounds like, oh, like you're not paying attention. But like, no, I am. But this is how I filter out the important things of what I'm hearing and yeah. don't get lost in the stories because otherwise I'd be like, wait, what were we talking about? You know, like, so yeah, yeah I, I, I find that I do need to have a lot to, to sort of take up my attention. Otherwise, I'm, I'm all over the place. That's interesting. So back to busyness. <laughs> so we, you know, we often wear busyness as like a badge of honor. Like, you know, when you say some, someone's, oh man, I'm so busy. Like we say that as pride, like almost prideful. Like, look how important I am. You know, is it a good thing or a bad thing to be super busy? I think it's probably, it's, it's not great. I mean, I think 
interestingly, I, Lauren and I received spiritual direction from some sisters in Spain and I was just like rattling off the things that I was doing and I wasn't doing it in a way, I didn't think I was doing it in a way that, you know, I wasn't trying to prove my busyness or my worth or anything. And she was like, why are you doing all of those things? And that was the first time that I was, she was like, I think you really need to step back, drop some of that stuff and figure out, you know, like what God is actually calling you to do. I also think sometimes I, on days when I don't have anything to do and I have like four hours or something, I could read something spiritual, but generally, you know, after an hour or whatever, I'm like, I need a break. Um, you know, I find myself, there's definitely a tendency to want to be doing something. And I think that like reflecting on it and sort of adoration and meditation um, stems from like me uh kind of being afraid sometimes to like just be silent and be with you know like um yeah just like just have this silence where you can actually reflect on sort of like what is going on in my interior life hmm. um what is god maybe speaking to me through these situations and stuff sometimes uh i think busyness is just and you're, you're trying to fill this this void to avoid you know like having to penetrate that um or answer that question yeah I remember challenging a confirmation class one time. It was like, you know, ninth to 10th graders. You know, can you just be 10 minutes in silence a day? And this girl asked, looked at me like I asked her to cut off her arm. And I said, well, what's, what, you don't think you can do it? And she said, I'm afraid of what I might hear mm-hmm. in silence. You know, she was afraid of being alone with herself. And sometimes I think that's why we stay so busy. Yeah. Because we don't like coming home to an empty apartment, closing the door and being like, no, I got to face myself and God. Yeah. You know, similar to that, um, uh, this is sort of a weird person to quote on a Catholic podcast, but the famous atheist Christopher Hitchens, he, I remember one time he was talking about Bill Buckley, who was himself a devoted Catholic, um, and he was saying that you always got the sense with Bill Buckley that he structured his day to avoid being alone with himself because he's afraid of what he might find, afraid to face his own demons. He was saying that like after you would tape a show, you would be, he would say to him, oh, you know, want to grab a drink or something, and he'd always be diving into a limo or running into an interview or had a, or had a, had a column to write, and on the outside it was like, oh, wow, look at what he produces. His take was, well, actually, he's just terrified to be alone with himself. And I think that, that, that's, that was, I remember hearing that and thinking it was interesting because I saw myself in that because I also have, I'm terrible with silence and I need to have constant things being thrown at me to sort of keep my attention. But also I think in some part just to sort of crowd out my own thoughts, which is not good, right? Mm. That's why in canon law, it's actually uh, part of canon law that priests have to take a silent retreat every year because the busyness and the activism can replace the intimate time with the Lord which has to be the primary of all of our lives. You know, we work for the Lord, but, you know, are you more Martha or are you more Mary? Yeah, and I think, like, even good things, right? Like, we're talking about these podcasts that we listen to, and, I mean, I'm certainly guilty of it, of just, like, all of these Catholic great podcasts that are out there where you can learn a lot and reading and all of that. It's it's good, but... Um, I mean, even St. Thomas Aquinas said at the end of his life, like, all it's all straw. Like, if you don't actually sit and develop a relationship with the Lord and you're just, you know, racking up this knowledge, you know, and, and talking about it, I mean, at the end of the day, like, what do you really have? So yeah. it is important to, like, take a step back from all of that. So turn off Restless right now. And go, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't do that. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's very true. So so what has your busyness prevented you from experiencing? Because being so busy does take us away from a lot of important things in life. Mm-hmm. For me, it was when I was, uh, so I'm in public accounting at one of the big four firms and it's notorious for turnover because the hours are very bad. And I was in audit traveling to clients all the time um, and working super late hours. And it was just all like, you know, wanting to advance in my career, but also just the standard expectation of like in busy season, your minimum work week is like 60 hours a week. Mm. And so I did neglect community for the first probably uh, six years of my career because I was like, I just need to, I'm the type of person, like you said, I want to get things done and do them well. And so I would just work all the time. And I wouldn't, I, it got to a point where I like wasn't hanging out with friends. I mean, I didn't really have a Catholic community at that point. So that was also my excuse of like, well, I don't really have good friends anyway. So <laughs> I'm just going to work. And, you know, I did feel accomplished in that, but there was this lack of community, which is so important, I think, for growing in faith. Um, 
And now that I have it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I spent all of those years doing that. I mean, God is a God works through, you know, our mistakes and everything. But man, I just when something starts to um, take over your life, I mean, that's uh, that's a warning sign that you need to <laughs> you need to just kind of self reflect. Getting and maybe if I balance. had done that, like maybe if I had self reflected, that would have um, been apparent to me. But at the time, it wasn't. Mm. I find in my, myself, I'm trying to um, schedule more margins in my day, like not have appointments back to back to back because of, I feel like I've missed out on, on some of the surprises God wants to pop in my life, you know, maybe yeah. a phone call that I need to take or something and, or just, you know, a friend just stops by and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't have coffee because I'm so busy, you know? So yeah. I, I feel like, you know, boxing God in and saying, God, you're only going to work from nine to five when I'm on the job, you know, and yeah. The yeah. problem is, how do you deal with perhaps feelings of laziness when you're trying to take that time to not be busy? Do you feel that way? I feel, I feel that way. Yeah. Like if my schedule's not morning to night, I'm like, oh, I'm being lazy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that that's a temptation, though, because we all need, I mean, they talk about in the spiritual life, too, recreation, right? So, um I don't know. I guess I guess you have to self-assess to be like, am I actually being lazy? Like, am I avoiding commitments and things that I should be doing? Or is this actually like a time that I've set aside for true rest and recreation that we all need? I mean, that's why we have Sunday, right? If true. it's used well. True. What do you guys think? You've been off silent over there. Uh, well, yeah. So if I have a day like with nothing going on, like maybe a Sunday afternoon or something, I know there are things that I should be planning for. Maybe it's an upcoming Restless episode. Maybe it's something <laughs> yes, that please. I said to the Bishop, Bishop's Council of Young Adults that I would be working on that I haven't made progress on in months. Maybe it's an upcoming youth group session, because I now run Stanford Youth Group since Father Joseph left. To take a few hypothetical examples, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or another. Maybe it's reading Catholic Social Teaching for an upcoming Leonine Forum meeting, which is every month in New York City. Diane and I are Leonine Fellows, which is a nonprofit organization that brings together young adults on a monthly basis to grow in our social, our Catholic social teaching and community. So I kind of have a lot on my plate, and then I'll get to a Sunday afternoon or something, and I just avoid doing all of it, you know? I really like cooking or baking, so I'm like, I'm going to make Buckeyes all afternoon because <laughs> I decided to host a party next weekend. Like, I'm adding another thing. All right, you have to explain to me what Buckeyes are. I don't— Ooh, they're chocolate and peanut butter. Oh, yes, They please. look like the poisonous nut, which is what a Buckeye is, but they taste like a Reese's. So right. they're they're really good. They're really popular. And mm. um, now that I can throw parties, I am. You know, I have two roommates. We have a lot of fun together. So, yeah, I keep finding that I fill my empty time with, like, doing the things that I enjoy, I guess. So, like, cooking or baking or going for a, a walk with my dog or hike or something like that instead of sitting down and doing this work that's on top of my actual job, which is maybe partly why I don't want to be doing it or because it feels like work. But if I just dive into it, I think I would actually enjoy it. You know, mm. I know I got to get it done, but I just, I constantly like switch which ball I'm juggling, you know, like yeah. what's the main priority right now. And then I keep taking on more things, which is great. So yeah, I think I like to be busy, but it's also a part of my identity. You know, like I was reflecting back I've been busy my entire life, you know, even as a kid going to school and then sports. And then I was in dance, like my whole childhood, religious education, playing with the neighbors for hours, you know, mm -hmm. uh, practicing an instrument, right? <laughs> High school, college, I was extremely busy. I had a really hard demanding major with tons of hours. I played on the ultimate Frisbee team. I was also in band, I went to mass, you know, parties, obviously, you know, like there, <laughs> there was just a lot going on always. Um, it's yeah. true. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, I don't, I don't necessarily feel guilty if I have downtime, especially if I feel like I've been busy enough that I warrant downtime. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, no, I mean, like I said before, I struggle with procrastination, and so it can be difficult to um, keep my top of work. I think I'm getting better at it, um, partially because I think I'm taking the obligations I've made ser you know, more seriously. So I mean like most of what I would have to do would be prepping for my CCD classes and I'm just not willing to go in there and, you know, fly by seat of my pants because the subject matter matters to me. 
Mm. Subject matter matters. To Subject matter me. matters. Um, yeah, yeah. An awkward sentence. <laughs> um, although I should say that's really the confirmation class because the amount of prep work I do for my regular class during which we really mostly discuss the gospel readings for that Sunday leaves much to be desired. I could probably do more more prep work for that, but mm. I kind of feel like I've, I can kind of handle it. So yeah, with that, so I don't know. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I think that downtime is good. And, and, and you know, you, you miss, like you said, Father, you, you, you miss things when you allow yourself no free time and you're not available to people which I think is important. Yeah. I like being available to people when they need me. So one of the reasons I think why a lot of young adults do struggle with busyness is for because of FOMO. Y'all know about FOMO. Mm-hmm. Fear, fear of, of missing, missing out. out. Jinx. <laughs> 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 yeah, fear of missing out. And I, I certainly struggle with that. Do you struggle with that? Like, yeah. like I want to do everything because I just, you know, don't want to miss great opportunities. I'm an introvert. Uh, so... Not really. (laughs) Sometimes I enjoy just being like, no, I need a break. Like I need to be by myself. And like, that's, that's why I enjoy like the reading and sort of like that. uh, Yeah. I guess search for knowledge because I just need a break from Mm. everything. (laughs) Yeah. But this is something that um, I definitely struggle with. I think partially because I am um, introverted in a lot of ways. And so, I mean, there've been periods in my life where I have not had a really solid friend group and I felt you know, left out of a lot of things. And so as a result, if someone asked me to do something, I pretty much always would just say yes, because mm. I was happy to be included, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and Same with me. Yeah. And so like, and it doesn't really matter what, what it is sometimes. Um, and I feel like intensely guilty about not being able to do something. Um, and I will sort of sometimes like mentally try to rearrange my schedule. Then I'm like, what are you, you're, what are you doing? You're rearranging things that can't be moved for something that doesn't, that you don't even want to do. Like, why are you? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So I mean, I, that's something I really, I really feel, um, but I, I'm trying to teach myself to like be willing to not do things, hmm. not just when I don't want to, but just when I, I can't take anything else on. Because sometimes it ends up being a source of pride too, because it's like, well, I need to be the one involved in all these things or so they won't be done right. And it's like, no, like other people will do them if you don't do them. Like you're not so important that like you're the linchpin to the whole operation, so to speak. Like let other people, you know, other people fill the gaps. You're not so special. So that's something I'm trying to remind myself of. Yeah. I wonder, I, and this is just my own perception, so it could be totally off, but like, there are some friends who, you know, will keep reaching out and reaching out even if you say no. But there are some friends who, if you say no like two or three times, they'll just stop sending invitations. And so that's for me is always like, well, I'm going to accept every invitation I'm offered because I don't want to be like that that guy that – because then they'll stop coming, you know? Even if I have legitimate reasons to be like, I'm sorry, I'm busy, I can't do this, then they'll stop asking. And I've met an awful lot of priests that are like, I have nothing to do. I'm like, well, how many invitations did you turn down, right? I mean – there's plenty of work to do if you're willing to say yes to a lot, but then you have the other side of just being way too busy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think we've turned a corner where now, unfortunately, you get a lot of non-committals, as we've talked about before, but people invite you to do something and you'll get a maybe. It's like, that is so unhelpful. Please <laughs> give me a yes or a no, or like when you may know. But I am the type that I typically always say yes. Like any like invitation, any opportunity to do anything. It's like a chance for an experience with people. Mm. So I, I go for them. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people are like, if I feel like it, I'll do that. And then, you know, the time comes, the day comes, something better comes along. Right. That's why a lot of people (sighs) our age hold out Yeah, is for that something better. But it's like, no, if like it's someone you care about or, or whatever, if there's any kind of good that can come from it, you should commit. You should yeah. say, yes, I will be there. So that's how I feel about things. That's the truth. Yeah. Preach it. One of my biggest pet peeves in people is when they say yes to something and then show up like six hours late or not at all. And it's like, come on, man. Like I was relying on you. And, I, and for, so for, for whatever reason, probably for reasons having to do with original sin, this is all most of the more, most of the important people in my life with whom I spend the most of the time are like, this are late people. And so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, come on. Like we are all like, you know, we're all waiting. Like, come on. There's things start at certain times, you know, late, late, late lasts forever on times only a moment. Like let's get there. Late lasts last forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, and then that, that's part of it too. Cause like, why? Well, people will overcommit sometimes. And I think that's also a problem. It's like, well, yeah, I can do that. It's like, well, no, you can't because you're half an hour away and I need you in five minutes. So just say no. Don't, don't say yes and leave me stranded, right? So. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it is nice to have those friends that you, you can rely on. Like, I know anytime I text Joe and like, hey, you want to go hiking? He's always like, yes. Now I know why. But <laughs> 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 he likes to fill his schedule with stuff. But, <laughs> but it's nice to have those friends that like you can always like rely on. 
I think what Lauren said is uh, I've tr- been trying to espouse this in my own life, being an introvert, you know, of just saying yes. Because I used to be like, oh, no, I just want to like, you know, I need my alone time. I need my, you know, chill, you know, just take a break from, from people. But every every event and thing, it really is an opportunity to like grow in community and relationship. And like life is all about relationships and sort of like, you know, um, getting to see Christ and another person of like, how can they, um, yeah, it's just, it's so beautiful to be in communion with other people. So I Mm. always generally, I mean, really, I find I'm so fulfilled after, even if I'm tired, you know, of just seeing people. So I've tried to make that sort of like a thing of this year of saying yes to all of these opportunities. And there is something really joyful about just spending time with people. You don't have to be doing things. It doesn't have to be like materialistic or whatever. It's like that communion because we are made for communion. So by doing that, you're like becoming more fully human who you're meant to be something beautiful about that. And, you know, we don't, we don't develop close friendships by developing close friendships. We develop them by doing other things. Like yeah. that's why these other, like bowling leagues don't exist to bowl, right? They exist to have a reason. <laughs> Golfing doesn't exist to golf. It exists to like, you know, drink beer uh, at like three o'clock on a weekend and hang out with people, right? Like <laughs> all these things exist for their own sake, but also exist to develop relationships. And I think especially COVID has fragmented people so much where it's like, we're afraid to have those. You don't really, I don't think you develop that over Zoom. I mean, you develop that with, being, you know, proximity to people, being with people for an extended period of time and getting to know them. And this is so important for people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's so true. And I, I, I think back to, you know, we had that episode on the five love languages. Mm-hmm. And my love language is quality time. Mm-hmm. So when I want to show love or give love, it's hanging out with people. Yeah. And honestly, I, yeah, again, I don't care what we do. Like we just play board games all afternoon. It's fine with me, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so fun, but I think we take for granted relationships, but uh, there's, I find my most joyous and fulfilled moments are when I'm with other people. Yeah. So we have to make sure our busyness does not overwhelm those the truly important things, mm-hmm. like the relationships. So if you if you're because everyone here said they're too busy. So what in your life could you eliminate to be open to those gifts of relationship and relationship with God, relationship with yourself in silence, relationship with others? What what could you eliminate? You don't have to, but I'm just saying what what could you? Oh, I think I'm doing pretty well. I mean, I have a lot on my plate, but it's it's about how I prioritize it. So every time I have spiritual direction, this comes up. How's your prayer time? You know, because my religious sister knows that I'm not putting in the prayer time. So I have to decide to make the time for that. But it doesn't mean that I have to abandon anything else, you know? Oh, good. That's that's kind of how I see it. And so your plate's not overflowing. No, I don't. I like think a it's a good Thanksgiving balance. Plate. It's yeah. I think it's a good balance, and I have to decide that this is important enough to do. Yeah. Every day. I don't think that I'm too busy, honestly. If anything, I think I should be busier. Um, mm. Like I said, I, I enjoy being busy, and I've been busier at other times in my life. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, like for example, I just um, was asked to take on a third CCD class. Oh my and gosh! I was like, I was like sure, I've got, I've got time. I actually, well, it's I, I told um, the the uh, the DRE at my parish that um, I was like, you know, most of your people. Have, most of your catechists are like married with kids and I'm not. So like I have time. So don't I feel like you're bothering me. I, I have the time to, 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 to fill. So no, I, I, if anything, I think I should be busier. So that's, I think that's a cause for canonization right there. Teaching three CCD classes. Yeah. You should see the kids. It's it's cause for expedited canonization. I forgot, I forgot the Monday night um, confirmation kids are a different breed than Sunday night confirmation yeah. kids. But, all right. <laughs> Sorry. All As I recall, you were a Monday night kid. Tuesday night, Tuesday night, Father. <laughs> <laughs> and they're a whole nother breed. I can only imagine. They were, we were. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, well, it is now time to wrap up, but I, this is my challenge for you. You know, evaluate your life and say, am I too busy? Am I wearing this as a badge of honor? Or am I? Ha- do I have the right balance? And am I busy about the right things? Because there are things we should be busy about. We should spend our time wisely in our relationship with God in seeking union with others. And that's what leads to the truest fulfillment. So whatever else is detracting from that, eliminate and I'll say, can I really take this out of my life? You can find us on Veritas Catholic Network, 1350 AM. Don't take that out of your life. And you can also find us wherever you get your podcasts. Take care and have a great weekend.